Aha! Hi everyone. In the previous lecture, I did cover absolute risk reduction, number needed to treat, and in this lecture, I'm going to cover number needed to harm. So, going back, absolute risk reduction is simply the true difference between the risk and the control and the treatment groups. So, number needed to harm is the number of patients that needs to be treated for a duration of time and this could be six months, one year, two years, five years, ten years, depending on the study, treated for a duration of time in order for one patient to be harmed. So now what does to be harmed mean? Well, usually when the new medication comes to the market or they're in the process of a research, this medication can cause side effect and that's how the patient can be harmed through these side effects. So to better understand what number needed to harm is, let's take this example over here. So this example says, a study reported 2% risk of cough in lisinopril group. So we have a new medication, lisinopril exists, it's an exist medication, it's a wonderful medication, but just for the sake of an example and understanding concept, I picked lisinopril because ACE inhibitors are known to cause cough. So there are 2% risk of cough in lisinopril group and 4% risk in control group. What is number needed to harm? So first of all, number needed to harm have an equation. Number needed to harm is 1 over absolute risk reduction. So another way, this can be 1 over percent risk in control group minus percent risk in the treatment group. So now that I know this, I need to find absolute risk reduction. So I do have the risk in each group. So absolute risk reduction is basically the difference between the two risks in the group. So this is going to be the control group, which is 4% minus the 2%. So 4 minus 2 is basically 2%. Now, do I jump in right away and, and plug in the 2% over here so we can get number needed to harm? No. And the reason why, it's because whenever I have number needed to treat or number needed to harm, this value must be in decimal places. Because if I place 2% over here, 1 over 2%, that's not going to give me the correct answer. So I do need to change this into decimal places. So basically 2% is, so this is same as 2 over 100, which is same as 0 0.02. So now I can use this and plug it over here. So number needed to harm is 1 over 0 0.02 and dividing 1 over 0 0.02 it's going to be 50 and one thing to keep in mind now I have a whole number over here what if I had 
let's take an example and say, instead of 50, this is just an example, instead of 50 over here, I had, let's say 50.6, 0.7, What are you gonna do? Are you going to round up, round up or round down? So this, keep this in your mind. Whenever we're doing number needed to harm, we always round down. So round down. This is the opposite of number needed to treat. With number needed to treat, we always round up. So if I had a number needed to treat 50.1, it's gonna be 51, even though it's not 0.5. The rule of 0.5 doesn't apply with number needed to treat or number needed to harm. So any decimal place after the whole number 50, it's going to round down, regardless if it's closer to 51 or it's far from 51. So in this case, it's 50, so we don't need to know to do anything in regard to that. So what does this mean, 50? Basically, what this means, going back to the definition of number needed to harm, is 50 patients need to be treated with lisinopril. in order for one patient to be harmed. And in this case, basically that one patient will experience cough. So that's what I meant by harm is basically the side effect. So every 50 patients we're gonna be treating with lisinopril only one patient is going to experience the cough. So this is it for this lecture. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.